In this video, we are going to find coterminal angles with radians, one positive and one negative. We'll do that by drawing a sketch, and in the process, we'll figure out what quadrant we're in, and we will find a reference angle. For years, we have known about degrees. We've known that this is a 90 degree angle, and if you came to here, here, I'll put it here. So th this was a 90 degree angle. If we came around to here, this was 180 degrees. If we came to this position, we were talking about 270 degrees. And if we went all the way around, that was 360 degrees. Uh, now we've learned about something called radians. And the bottom line was a semicircle you know, a straight angle, uh, is pi radians, pi. So I'm going to go ahead and put pi right here uh, to remind us that this position is pi radians. Because of that, if we stopped halfway, if we stopped here, that's half of pi, or pi over 2. Um, if we went around to this position, 270 degrees, that is 3 pi over 2. And sometimes I will count off the pi over 2's. Every 90 degrees is a pi over 2. So this is sort of 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Um, if we went all the way around, that would be 2 pi. So 2 pi is just like 360 degrees. It's a full revolution. Because 2 pi is a full revolution, we can get coterminal angles by adding or subtracting 2 pi. So that's what we are going to do. But when you're adding and subtracting, you really l need uh, like denominators. So as soon as I see that this is a denominator of 3, I think to myself, OK, how can I write 2 pi as something over 3. So basically, I'm going to wind up uh, multiplying the numerator and denominator here by 3 to make a new fraction. So this would be 6 pi over 3. And of course, 6 divided by 3 is 2. So you can see that this is the same as 2 pi. So um, yeah, I want to add and subtract 2 pi. So I'm getting a full revolution and going back to where I started from. But I need like denominators. So what I'm really going to wind up doing is I'm going to do 8 pi over 3 plus, And instead of saying plus 2 pi, I'm going to do this version, 6 pi over 3. So I have like denominators. Um, so that's going to give me 14 pi over 3. Okay, so that is a positive coterminal angle. Uh, let's now find a negative coterminal angle. So I'm going to do 8 pi over 3 minus 2 pi. Um, so 8 pi over 3 minus 6 pi over 3, which is the same thing as 2 pi. Um, so that gives me 2 pi over 3. Now that's another positive coterminal angle. I'm still shooting for a negative, so I'm going to uh, again subtract another 2 pi. Uh, so again, I'm going to subtract 6 pi over 3. And this time I get what I'm looking for. This will be negative 4 pi over 3. And there's my negative coterminal angle. Um, we are also supposed to sketch this. So um, we are sketching 8 pi over 3. So I'm just going to write that down to remind me that we're sketching 8 pi over 3. It might be helpful um, to think about that 8 over 3 part as a decimal. All right, so this is about 2.7. So 8 pi over 3 is approximately 2.7 pi. All right, so that's, that's good to know. Um, because again, remember that um, right here is 
half of pi, and you know what, I'm going to put that as a decimal as well. So that's 0.5 pi. This position is one whole pi. Um, this position down here is one and a half pi. And this position, if I went all the way back to the start, would be two whole pi. Um, so this is 2.7 pi. So if I'm going to sketch that, um, let's see, I want to draw the path in green. If I went all the way around and back to where I started from, so far I've gone uh, 2 pi. Okay, now if I went another 0.5 pi, now I've gone um, 2.5 pi. Now if I went all the way to here, that would be 3 pi. Um, so I'm not going to go that far. So I know I'm going to land here in the uh, second quadrant here. Um, because here I am at 2.5 pi, and I don't want to go all the way to 3 pi. So I'm going to stop here in this quadrant and draw my angle. So look, here is the um, initial side of my angle in standard position. and like I said, I'm going to draw my terminal side in the second quadrant. So that is a sketch of what happened. So writing this as a decimal, 8 over 3 as 2.7, helps you do the sketch. So, and uh, we found the quadrant. We are in the second quadrant. Okay, that just leaves the reference angle. How do we find that? Well, of course, the reference angle is this angle right here. Um, let's see, I think I'll use green. Um, the reference angle is this angle right here. I'll just put a little theta here. Now remember, the angle itself is at 8 pi over 3. However, because this is an angle that spiraled around, all the way around, um, of uh, 2 pi and then some, it's going to be easier if I just look at the coterminal angle that just goes from uh, 2 pi straight to here. And I'll, I'll just use that to find out what this reference angle is. So um, we actually already found that in the process of finding coterminal angles. Remember uh, when we subtracted 6 pi over 3? Um, to take away one of the revolutions, and we got this positive coterminal angle. Now, we kept going because we were on our way to a negative coterminal angle, but 2 pi over 3 um, is this purple angle that I drew, all right? So this um, is 2 pi over 3 if I just went straight here. So this angle, uh, the reference angle, which is always measured against the x-axis, is between 1 pi and 2 pi over 3. So uh, if I want to find the angle between two things, all I have to do is subtract. So I'm just going to subtract pi minus the 2 pi over 3 and see what I get. Now again, I'm going to need like denominators. So this right now it's like having pi over 1. If I multiply these by 3 so I can get my like denominators, okay, then I'm going to have 3 pi over 3 minus 2 pi over 3, um, which is just 1 pi over 3 or pi over 3. So that is the reference angle. All right, let's do another one. All right, 7 pi over 8. Again, we can find coterminal angles by adding and subtracting 2 pi because that's a complete revolution. However, um, I'm going to need like denominators. So let's see, 2 pi is going to be the same thing as uh, I need something over 8. So I'm going to wind up 
multiplying by 8 in the numerator and the denominator, then that's going to give me 16 pi over 8. So when I add and subtract 2 pi, I'm going to do it by adding and subtracting 16 pi over 8. Keep that in mind. Uh, so here we go. So I can do 7 pi over 8 plus 16 pi over 8. All right, this is me adding 2 pi. That's going to give me 23 pi over 8. So that is a positive coterminal angle. Now I'm going to go for the negative coterminal angle by subtracting 2 pi. So uh, I'm going to do that by subtracting 16 pi over 8. So that's going to give me negative 9 pi over 8, and that is a negative coterminal angle. Now, I'm going to do the sketch next. And uh, to do the sketch, it would be really helpful to understand what 7 eighths is as a decimal. So I'm going to use my calculator to help me out. So 7 divided by 8 is 0.875. So about 0.9. OK, so that means 7 eighths pi is about 0.9 pi. It's a little bit less than 1 pi. Um, so we know that one whole pi is right here at 180 degrees. So when we draw this angle, we're just going to make sure to draw the angle in such a way that it stops a little bit short of pi. So it should be somewhere in this uh, quadrant, which, by the way, is the second quadrant. OK. And um, so this is a pretty straightforward angle because it just goes straight there. It doesn't wrap around the circle or anything. It doesn't wrap around bigger than 2 pi. Um, now, so that just leaves the reference angle that we need to find. Uh, um, let's see. I think I'll do this in purple. So this is the reference angle that we are looking for. And uh, it is somewhere between pi and our original angle, 7 pi over 8. All right, it's between those two. So that means we need to subtract. Uh, we need to subtract pi minus 7 pi over 8 to find out how far apart they are. So we're going to need like denominators. So this is like having pi over 1. So I need a denominator of 8. So I'm going to multiply everything by 8. And that's going to give me. Uh, 8 pi over 8 minus 7 pi over 8, which is just pi over 8. You know, it's like 1 pi over 8, which is just pi over 8. So that is my reference angle. Okay, let's do one more in this video, and then I'll save the rest for another video. All right, so we have negative. 7 pi over 6. Uh, to achieve coterminal angles, I can add and subtract 2 pi, because that takes me all the way around. But I am going to need like denominators. So 2 pi, um, I'm going to need a denominator of 6, so I can have like denominators. So that's why I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by 6. And that tells me that 2 pi is the same thing as 12 pi over 6. So when I add and subtract 2 pi, I'm going to use the form 12 pi over 6. So here I go. When I find my uh, positive coterminal angle, I'm going to take my negative 6 pi over 6, and I'm going to add 2 pi by adding 12 pi over 6. So that's going to give me 5 pi 
over 6, and there is my positive coterminal angle. Uh, now, if I want a negative coterminal angle, I will take my 7 pi over 6 and subtract 12 pi over 6. All right, so that's going to give me negative 19 pi over 6. So that is a negative coterminal angle. Um, now it's time for the sketch. Now when I go to do this sketch, it would be helpful to know what the decimal form of this is. Now I can already guess that 7 6 is something close to 1. But let's just take a look. 7, uh, I'm sorry, it's, it's something a, a little bit bigger than 1. So 7 6, so we'll do 7 divided by 6. So that's uh, 1.2 if we round to one decimal place. It's going to be 1.2. That means this is approximately negative 1.2 pi. And that's just going to help me with the sketch. So if my initial side of the angle is here, as it always is, um, the negative direction is in this direction. So if I went. Um, to here, this would be negative pi. So I need to go negative uh, 1.2 pi. So I need to go a little bit past that. So that's going to put me into the second quadrant once again. OK, so my path is clockwise, because this is the negative direction. Okay. So there's my negative 1.2 pi, um, which is uh, in radians is this negative 7 pi over 6. OK, so there's a nice sketch of that. Um, so again, that puts us in the second quadrant. It seems like all of our problems so far have been in the second quadrant. It's super weird. Anyway, let's deal with the problem at hand. Uh, but we do need the reference angle next. I see that coming. So the reference angle is right here in green. This is the reference angle that I'm looking for. Uh, so right here is negative pi. And then the actual angle went a little bit further, and it went to negative 7 pi over 6. So I need to subtract these. All right, to find the space between them. Um, now, I could do negative 7 pi over 6 minus negative pi. Um, and that's going to give me the uh, reference angle as a negative answer. But reference angles are always positive. So what I would encourage you to do is uh, ignore the signs of these right now. And uh, we just really need to know what's the difference between 7 pi over 6 and pi. Because uh, the reference angle, it's sort of like the absolute value. Uh, we don't want any negative numbers. So I'm just going to do 7 pi over 6 minus pi. And that will tell me how far apart these are. That will tell me how the, the size of this angle. OK, um, I do need like denominators, though, to do this. So right now it's like pi over 1. So if I multiply the numerator and denominator by 6, then suddenly I'm dealing with 7 pi over 6 uh, minus 6 pi over 6. So the reference angle is 1 pi over 6, or just pi over 6. All right, that's enough for one video. So I'm going to stop this video here. But we do have a few more to go. Um, so I will do a few more in the next video.